And final piece of that would be, how do we use media today, not necessarily to kind of blast everybody in one go, but getting ideas to spread and grow to broader audiences over a longer and more continuous period of time. The final piece is really to have a look at, say, are there some people who are already doing it? I reckon that you'll, you'll have examples in, in, in the audience, loads of them that I'm not even aware of, but these are the ones uh, that I looked at. So just following this kind of lexicon throughout in terms of consumers' lives, there are a number of things you could do there. The first cup of coffee of the day is the most important cup of coffee of the day. But just in terms of weekdays, here's a couple of very quick examples. Orange in the UK, Orange Wednesdays, Own Wednesdays, enable people who love the cinema to go to the cinema on a Wednesday, cheaper, free, that kind of thing, build a relationship with the consumer. Now, Orange does loads of other communication, obviously, but what's interesting is that is one piece of communication that is consistent, they've worked it over time, and arguably it's the most memorable piece of communication they've been, that they have been doing over time. A new one in the UK is Lurpak, Lurpak butter, associate butter with breakfast. Now, unfortunately, you know, we don't have a full English anymore every morning. We're gonna have a full English, we have it on a Saturday. So Lurpak, butter, breakfast, Saturday, Lurpak Saturdays, build a brand around owning a particular time and a great time, which is really Saturday morning, which I think is the best time of the week, um, and I'm sure many others do, and build a brand around that particular time. Space, just in terms of media spaces. Um, we did something years ago uh, with, in collaboration with, with, with the Nets and talking to T's for the Department of um, Transport. And that was actually really to engage teens in road safety. The observation was that traditional TV advertising hadn't worked with that particular group because it feels like it's the government, it's authority talking to you. The mobile device is the teen's device. It's, it's, it's their device. It holds them together as a group. So instead of shooting a traditional ad, why not make an ad on the mobile device and get them to spread that through their devices and through the internet, which is exactly what we've done and very successful. So that's just one example of it. Now, moving on, the DFT again, and this is road safety again, but this is for younger children, is they have been spending a lot of money over the years on trying to get kids to look, well, I can't remember which way it is, left, right, left again, okay? As they walk, as they, you've got, look left, look right, look left again before you cross the road, otherwise you're gonna get flattened. Um, now, what's been happening is, that although money has consistently been spent on this through a traditional advertising route, behavior hasn't changed. Nothing's changed, and the same number of accidents are still um, taking place. So another way to do this, and I'm sure that people have talked about behaviorism and all that kind of thing, is actually not to start with the message, but to start with the behavior. Could we get kids to actually behave physically in a look left, look right, look left again kind of way? And can we do it through the channels through the media spaces that they really engage in. Well, they love gaming. So the COI took the decision to say, actually, what we'll do is we're prepared to go along with this. We will invest behind creating a game for young kids, seven to eight year olds, that kind of age group, which will, to do well in the game, to win the game, to get to the end of the game, you have to be constantly moving and looking left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right, and get the behavior instilled uh, into uh, younger kids. Now, of course, this is still using advertising, but the purpose of the advertising now is not to impart a message, but to get people to the game itself. So media spaces themselves can be used in a really active way um, to engage consumers. This one I love. It's not one of ours. Um, Cabby's Whisper. Now, uh, I remember this. is one of the first things I ever worked on when I, when I, when I worked, joined um, Sarchi's, which was the launch of Cadbury's Whisper, which was a massive success. It was a new kind of textured chocolate. And it was the big thing in the 80s. It, it, distribution, it was just out everywhere. And gradually, 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 gradually over the years, it just kind of faded away, and eventually it was delisted, gone. But what happened was, and I, I don't know whether Cadbury's did this themselves or whether, or whether it just emerged, was on Facebook, a bring back Cadbury's Whisper campaign emerged and a group of people got together and they were all talking about how much they loved Whisper, how fantastic it was and it wasn't about time to bring that back. So that was emerging in a social media space. What Cadbury's did or what the agency did which was very smart was to go, let's just build on that, let's keep that going, let's, let's, let, 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 let's see how big it gets and then let's bring Whisper back. And again, they used traditional advertising to spread the message but the message that was spread was everything that was being said in here, so the quotes about whisper that were being said on Facebook became the print advertising 
then was resulted in what was, was behind the relaunch um, of Cadbury's, over, uh, Cadbury's Whisper. So again, using media spaces is one way to be thinking about different kinds of ideas and where they can come from in the context of how people are leading their lives and what are they engaging with and what they're doing. Consumers' lives and things that they like, there's loads in this particular area. Um, there's one example here which I think is, 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 is particularly strong because it really, it, really, it really makes the point. Gordon's Gin, UK, well, global brand, very strong in the UK, but to be all honest, young kids, teens, you know, the younger or even the middle classes, they all prefer a bit of vodka. And Gordon's has been in decline consistently over a long period of time. Now, it's been in decline whilst advertising, which features green sort of water and bottles, and ice cubes has been plopping in, plopping in years and years and years of this, not really going anywhere. Now, in terms of life and looking at the particular issue, Diageo were very keen to re-engage with kind of the uh, urban 25, 45, middle classes, 